Welcome to our Energy Connect Studio, Adipec 2022. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me, Robin Mills, CEO of Kamar Energy, and thanks for being here with me. Thank you, Julian. Now, we're here at Adipec, and what a busy start it's been. How's it gone for you, and what are some of the conversations you've been having? Well, you know, as someone was saying, it's, uh, you know, you, uh, if you ask something at Adipec, you know, the answer is hydrogen, even if you don't know the question, right? <laughs> so, uh, that's, it's, um, it's just interesting, you know, how much the stress is indeed on, on hydrogen, on carbon capture and all these technologies around the energy transition. There's a lot of oil and gas business being done, but uh, more quietly, let's say. Um, but it is, it is striking just how busy it is and, uh, and how um, energetic it is, let's say, how, what a buzz there is. So I think people feel that the energy business is doing well right now. Um, we know there's a global energy crisis and, uh, uh, and that's tough for a lot of people, but, but it, it's a demand that, that has to be met by the energy industry. Um, and so there's a lot of, you know, metaphorically speaking, energy around that. Yeah, I, I'm going to feel in the studio, but also on the show floor. And yeah, I wanted to touch on, we're coming up to the end of 2022, and what a year it's been. You mentioned the energy crisis, unpredicted mm. geopolitical events. Um, where do you think we stand looking into 2023? Well, I think, you know, we, we'll see these, obviously the political events, and, you know, the, the, the fallout of the, of the, the war in, in Ukraine continue. Obviously, you know, we, we don't know exactly how and when, when no. that will end, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but the energy implications that are massive. I mean, for me, it means the you know, but the, the, the near elimination of, of Russia as, as an oil and gas exporter to Europe. And, uh, and that leaves a huge hole for others to fill. And of course, the, the Middle East is absolutely going to be you know, the primary source of filling that hole. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that hydrogen, but I want to get your people on where we are in the region, the Middle East regions, hydrogen push, growth and opportunities. So, you know, we, uh, we as a company, we follow hydrogen in the region very closely. We're tracking 55 projects at the moment, um, you know, and it's growing all the time, probably every week, two or three, it could be two or three new projects a week, literally. Um, of, of those, you know, the number that have made it to a final, final investment decision, you know, two or three. So it's, it's only a very small number. We're still at an early stage of, uh, of this industry. And some of these projects, of course, won't happen or will get, will get delayed. Um, but there is a huge amount of, moment, of momentum behind it. The challenge now, I think, is to turn those into, into real projects, uh, to accept that there'll be some disappointments, um, not to get carried away by the hype, but also realise that, that there's a huge amount of urgency around this and you know, we do need to press forward. Yes, and one other thing you, know, you mentioned about you know, the energy crisis, but through that, you, with Russian gas not being available, countries like Germany, but also the US, are looking to the Middle East region again um, for quite big deals in between the UAE and Germany and some other you know, nationalities. So where do you, see, do you see that growing sort of more? into deals between countries? Well, it absolutely will. I and mean, you know, we've seen very senior German politicians in particular and other Europeans as well turning up in, in Abu Dhabi, in, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt and elsewhere in the region. Um, looking for anywhere that has, a, in the short term, has surplus gas or, or LNG. And in the long term, there could be a supplier of, of hydrogen to Europe. Um, now, at the moment, you know, there isn't very much spare LNG. So they, they've secured some, or probably what, what there is. Um, but they've got to accept that you know, there won't be a lot of new LNG out of this region until 2026 or, or 27. Uh, and getting over the, those three or four years is, is, is a real challenge. Yeah. Now, we're obviously just on the cusp of COP27 coming up um, in Egypt. And then, obviously, the road to COP28, which also seems to now be mentioned in the whole plethora. How important is that to have had, um, well, obviously in Africa, but to have a COP in the Middle East um, coming up? Well, it's extremely important. I mean, COP28, of course, in, in, uh, in the UAE. Um, it's a real opportunity for the, the energy industry here to, to make its case about how it's part of the, the solution. We've heard that a lot at Adipec, uh, you know, the past few days. You know, the, the oil and gas industry wants to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. That means things like carbon capture, it means things like hydrogen. It also means accepting that, you know, as I say, we have this huge hole in the energy system right now. Um, and in the short term, uh, uh, that only oil and gas can fill that. Great, Robin. Well, I really appreciate you giving me your time. Thanks once again for coming down. Thanks very much, Julian.